Could the Hornets bring back a familiar face? We take a look at some of the team stats for the Charlotte Hornets, and then we go to the random wheel of Hornets content. That's all today on the Locked on Hornets podcast. Locked on Hornets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. In a minute, cuz, we live. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your pods. That includes YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitter at Walker Mail, at Doug Branson, LOH. Show handle on Twitter at Locked On Hornets. I was watching yesterday's show, Doug. Just chaotic, man. What were we doing the last? It's, we are delusional. Like those two shows. Woo! Thank you all for sticking with us. All right, so listen, summers for feelings, baby. I mean, we're we're <laughs> almost uh, we're about a month away from the preseason. That's when reason will will take hold and we'll uh, get semi serious about Hornets basketball. But right now, summer, you know, everybody everybody's feeling good. Uh, the fall, though, you know, I was thinking about this, Walker. I understand now why the NFL is America's biggest sport because I walked outside my door the other day. And it felt amazing outside. I didn't feel like I was going to die. The humidity wasn't uh, super high and I could leave the door open. It was like the first day that I could leave the door open and just let some cool air come into the house. And then I thought immediately upon doing that, I was like, oh, I bet I bet football starting soon. Like it's mm. just in my mind, the you good feeling outside. The yes, I associate with it the NFL starting. So my proposal for the NBA is: if you really want to compete with the NFL, you need to do one of two things: just compete directly and start the season now, which would definitely help us because I'd love to talk about some Hornets basketball, or shorten the season and start it around Christmas because then you can get all those warm, fuzzy Christmas vibes and associate that with the NBA. And then it takes you to August, and then you don't have to wait until the NFL season for like two months to have some sport to watch. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Adam also, Silver, listen up. You you kind of bring up a good point. I, I literally was talking to you about this just before we started recording. Today, I feel like I want basketball. Doing a daily podcast, having a ton of content to discuss all the time. You know, it's 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 a lot, especially when you're doing a niche basketball podcast every niche. day. Niche, you got to try to find stuff to talk about. So it's nice to have a break. We haven't. I don't really have to try. You might have to try. I don't have to try. I could talk about anything. Literally, say one word. I'll talk about it. Pizza. I love pizza. You know, in in grade school, I I would always cheat when they would say like, "All right, the five food groups," and I would be like, "Pizza, nailed it! All five food groups. Check it out. Check my work. Double check my work. I win pizza." Those square pizzas in elementary school were good. I'd take one right now. Those were fantastic. The whole school food is nasty. That's a myth. Um, and we might get to Hornets myths on the wheel of random Hornets content <laughs> later Segway. on. All right. Let's now bring it back to the main focus. Anyway, I just said I'm ready for basketball. I'm actually ready yeah. for the start of basketball season. Not too terribly far away. And the Hornets could bring back a familiar face Doug so we did get some news around the Charlotte Hornets at least kind of in the last two days Chris Haynes of Yahoo sources of Yahoo Sports his sources said quote a felony charge <laughs> against do you like that that's tough uh, it's tough sports and sources right there next to one another it's tough well yes Yahoo sources is what I have written down but it is from <laughs> Yahoo Sports so this was Chris Haynes reporting this a felony charge against free agent center Montrez Harrell on trafficking marijuana has been reduced to possession of marijuana and a misdemeanor a judge ruled this morning said that i think yesterday or two days ago if he's in good legal standing for the next 12 months that misdemeanor will be removed from his record so awesome news for montrez and i know montrez kind of put one of those tweets out maybe a couple weeks ago saying hey great news like feeling good got some good news regarding all of this it was pretty clear during the exit day interview, Montrez had the longest answers ever where he was trying to be, I don't know, he was trying to avoid some trouble, but also it was very clear that he wasn't happy with James Borrego, his <laughs> lack of playing time, especially in that play-in game against Atlanta. And I actually agreed with him. I think Montrez should have played more than yeah. Mason Plumley staying out there as much. And Montrez one of like two or three guys that seemed ready to play against the Atlanta Hawks in the postseason. Borrego was too slow to hit the panic button. He was too yeah, slow to hit the panic button. Slow. He wanted to trust 
what what you know his game plan going in, and he boinked it. But but even and, and Montrez was playing in the first half, and then he took him out. You know that that was weird. Yeah, and Montrez was getting to the free throw line. Either way, Montrez wasn't happy. He said it was kind of hard to put yourself a part of the regular rotation when you're coming in late in that trade that the Hornets had with Washington. So I didn't think there was a shot Montrez would come back to Charlotte, especially with James Borrego at the helm. Then I didn't think there was a shot when he was arrested for having three pounds of marijuana on him in a car that he rented. Now. I did have some questions about the search and seizure of that. If you go and look at the police report, it's a little <laughs> eyebrow raising. A little, Just little, fourth, little Fourth Amendment talk. Yeah. All right, yeah. here we go. Yeah, let's, let, we can do that. So I didn't love it. But then I thought, okay, if you have that and not a very good relationship with Borrego, you're not bringing Montrez back. But now this is a misdemeanor. I, I don't care about weed, right? Yes, it's a lot for sure. Like, no doubt. It's a lot of weed. He's a big guy. Care. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like his alcohol intake. Someday those big guys, they need a lot more. That's what it is for Montrez. And I'm cool with it. I, I, I could not care less about that. Right. Bring him on. That's totally fine with me. The real thing here, Doug, is Steve Clifford is a defensive minded coach. That's clearly Montrez's weakness. So even still, he might not fit the profile, but it's not Borrego. And Trez had a very good chemistry with LaMelo. I would still say the likelihood is slim, but I do think there is, as you might say, a non-zero chance um, that Montrez could return to the Hornets. Yeah, I, I guess the question would be, what were the bad feelings only for James Borrego and those decisions, or did they extend into the front office? Montrez Harrell not feeling like the front office was, was really supporting him either. Um, I, I would say, uh, in all likelihood, Montrez Harrell is wearing some kind of other uniform. Right. Because I think Montrez can contribute things, so there might be some other teams. You know, Montrez Harrell was traded to the Charlotte Hornets, did not choose to come to the Charlotte Hornets. There might be some other teams like the Miami Heat uh, failing to, to you know, make a big splash like Donovan Mitchell. They obviously failed to acquire Kevin Durant. They may be ma- looking to make some moves around the margins to compete in in a tougher Eastern Conference, and Montrez Harrell has a lot to give to some of these competing teams. And I and I think he would give the edge to those teams over Charlotte, which seems to be destined uh, to be struggling to make the play in at best. Yeah, and the other thing too is. What kind of role is Montrez ready for? If he wants to, he start, wants to start. Gonna, I know <laughs> He's that. not going to start on this team. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I would want the minutes to mostly be divvied up between Mark Williams and Trez. And I know Mason's going to start at the beginning of the season. We've talked a lot about Mason Plumley, but if you look at the pick and roll numbers for Montrez Harrell, just throughout his career, he's been awesome at it. And so this is a stat I came across too. If you look back at 2020, 2021, his um his points per PNR per possession 95 percentile the 81st percentile 87 and a half percentile 19 uh excuse me 95th percentile going all the way back from 2021 uh 2021 all the way to 2017 2018 like he's always finishing in the 80th percentile and then you put him along with Lamelo and boom like you could see it right there those two clearly had an awesome offensive chemistry so that there's value to that I'll always really like his time here yeah, no, and I I don't doubt anything you're saying, but I'm lo- instead of looking to the past, I'm really looking into the future at this point and saying and and saying that Montres Harrell coming back to the Hornets would annoy me in the same way that signing Alfred Payton uh, to be the backup point oh, guard really? would annoy me, <laughs> because those kind of maneuvers would signal that they are trying to fill certain gaps that a team looking to compete would want to fill. But I don't see this team as really competing at this point for a variety of reasons. So why not instead focus on the development of Mark Williams and not take away any minutes from that? It's it's just this fence riding that I don't understand. I'd rather this team just choose like, hey, this year is going to be a little bit of a wash. So let's focus on development and not worry about trying to make these moves around the margins to, you know, take us from like 40 wins to 45 wins because not, they're not going to get to 40 wins. Uh, well, I mean, I would say I hope Montrez takes those minutes away from Mason. I hope it doesn't affect Mark Williams' numbers. But also, I would say if we're trying well, to develop these on, players, you, well, yeah, and maybe that's true. But I also, if you're talking about development, 
then giving LaMelo the most capable PNR partner, I think helps LaMelo's development. I think it helps LaMelo be as effective as possible because right now it's Mark Williams, who's a young pup in the NBA and Montrez clearly would be the best option there. And so I, yeah, I, I think it, Alfred Payton, Montrez Harrell, different in my opinion, from that standpoint, I don't think Trez is going to get you to the postseason, but Considering what's happened, I, I, it's not like I was clamoring for him at the beginning, but now, you know, okay. Like if he, if, the, if it's not going to be a problem in the middle of the season because of his lack of role. And if that's true, fine. Like I understand not bringing him back, but if he's cool with it, I, I like him, man, you know, I do. So it'd be interesting to see. All right. Coming up next on the lockdown Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. We're going to bring you some more stats. We're going to bring you Ooh, the top five. Off- are we doing top five offensive and defensive stats? Or are we looking at where the Hornets are in comparison to some other NBA teams? Yeah, let me get back here. Let me help you out. Yeah, um, yeah please So, do. yeah, I've got the top five. Or I've got the stats for their O LeBron and D LeBron. These are offensive impact per 100 possessions. Take that, so LeBron. Yeah, so we're going <laughs> to... We're going to look at the top five offense and defense from the Charlotte Hornets last season and ask the question, uh, who will be the top five and on offense and defense next season? Okay, awesome. All right, bring it back to me. I got an important read coming up. <laughs> okay, Come on. Hold on. FaceTime. FaceTime. Hold on. FaceTime. Hold FaceTime. on. FaceTime. Press the button. Press the button, Doug. Stop scrolling. Stop scrolling. All right, let's talk about Bet Online, a proud partner here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week's games. Bet Online is also your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events that include includes the MLB, MMA, boxing, even golf. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. Top five offensive and defensive stats coming up next. Locked on Hornets. This is Locked on Hornets. We need Mitch Kupchak to throw a party like Sam Presti. Can he party like Presti? And Russell Westbrook. <laughs> yeah, but who are you going to get to perform? Because remember, Nas. they got Nas. I, they did get Nas. Man, who is Mitch Kupchak getting to that Nelly. party to perform? Can we get Nelly? No. Can Master we get- P. <laughs> I hate you right now. <laughs> it's time for more of the Locked on Hornets podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, before oh no, before we get to these stats, I what this is, picture that I'm showing right now of Mitch Kupchak standing next to Steve Clifford. Uh, this must have been after they announced Steve Clifford as head coach. This popped up on my timeline. I think at the Hive used this picture <sighs> in an article in one of the articles that they've written recently. So if you want to see this picture for yourself, if you're listening to the podcast. Uh, then go to atthehive.com. It's like one of the first articles on their main page. Uh, So you're welcome at the Hive. You got a free plug there for using this amazing photo of Mitch Kupchak standing next to Steve Clifford in in (sighs) what looks like a, 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 I think if you, if you typed into one of those AI image generators, shotgun wedding, uh, this is the picture that would come (laughs) up because Steve Clifford looks absolutely so good. Shocked. Uh, to be standing where he's standing, and and I would did like no one Walker did anyone tell them they were being photographed? They just there's, look absolutely shocked to be photographed. There's not a background underrated part of this. It's right. just a blank white screen, so you're not having any Hornets graphics. You don't even have the courtesy to there's bring blank, in what blank white faces too. Yeah, blank white I, faces. I, yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, Mitch Kupchak almost gets ready. I mean, he's clearly not, but but there's a shot of him getting. Steve Clifford is still shook that there's a camera in his face taking his picture. Can we get a close up on Steve Clifford? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Can I enhance? Can I enhance? Oh my God! There we go. Yeah, <laughs> he's shocked. He's absolutely yes. shocked. I'm also. I know. I know factually that Mitch Kupchak is what or was a player in the NBA. And and any player, I mean, you know, apart from the the anomalies like your Spud Webbs or your Muggsy Bogueses or your mm-hmm. Kimba Walkers of the world, apart from them, 
Uh, any basketball player playing any position is going to be tall compared to the average human person. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just seeing them stand side by side, seeing Mitch and Steve next to one another, the height difference <laughs> is alarming to me. Um, I feel like they should have done Steve a solid here. The old Tom Cruise. Do you know this about Tom Cruise? That when he is uh, one-on-one with like a, a, a lead actress that they give him a box to stand on because he is very short yeah. and, and he's a movie star and they, they don't want, you know, the, the height discrepancy in, in the shot. So I, I feel like they should have made a, a, a Tom Cruise maneuver here and given, uh, get, gotten an apple cart or something and given it to uh, Steve Clifford to stand on. It would have helped. There's no doubt about that. Steve Clifford is shook that there's a picture being taken. Mitch Kupchak kind of gets there, but not really. That photo was amazing. So I'm glad that <laughs> I'm you sorry. I just had to bring scary. that to the people. I hope I did a good enough job for the listeners explaining it again. Go to YouTube. Don't go. go to to, YouTube. Why did I say at the hive? Just go to YouTube. Go to our YouTube. I'm over here giving at the hive <laughs> free pub. Yeah. You can just go to YouTube and uh, check out the video to see the picture for yourself. Okay, let's talk about these stats, Walker. I've pulled... Uh, a, a real... Yes, yeah, this this graphic is a lot less scary. Let's talk about this. Well, uh, just wait till I get the, to the defensive stats. Then it gets a lot scarier. Um, I think I've got them pulled up right now, actually. So this is B-Ball Index. They do this LeBron stat. You can read all about it on B-Ball dash index.com but essentially it, the o lebron stat measures offensive impact per 100 possessions and the d lebron stat measures defensive impact per 100 possessions a lot of people trust this stat all right now moving on i'm just just trust me and trust the stat so i'm going to start with the offense and sort it and say that uh terry rozier and miles bridges were tied for the best offensive lebron stat at 1.96 Below those two, LaMelo Ball at 1.72. Below LaMelo, Montrez Harrell at 1.55, backing up your uh, talk about Montrez Harrell in the first segment and his impact. And then below him, Kelly Oubre Jr. at 0.59. And in fact, those five represent the only five players that had a positive impact offensively for the Charlotte Hornets, according to this stat. So, uh, Walk, Walker, I ask you, who mm-hmm. do you think the top five offensive LeBron players will be for the Charlotte Hornets next season? How do you rank them? Yeah, I mean, I think LaMelo and Terry will still probably be up there. You know, Gordon Hayward, I, I'm a little surprised that his offensive LeBron is a negative. I know that he wasn't very aggressive. I know that the free throw trips were pretty inconsistent, so maybe that had something to do with it. The, his offensive archetype, according to Basketball Index, is movement shooter, and I feel like he was more stationary this past season, which is probably going to happen with his age. And so, yeah, just a little interesting to see some of these things. I, I wouldn't have guessed them, but LaMelo, Terry, those guys have to be up there. I mean, Doug, offensively, if if they bring back Trez, it would make sense that he would be a post scorer up there again. But the problem is they didn't add anybody. I don't know who would come up. I mean, maybe book night for the biggest of optimists. But yeah, I, I think really it's LaMelo and Terry that I feel the best about. And maybe Gordon, if there's any kind of resurrection year. Yeah, I really think this is going to be the season that LaMelo uh, takes the offensive reins fully. I think he ascends to number one on this list, uh, very close behind, maybe tied similar to how it was last season between Terry and Miles. I think LaMelo scoops up some of those uh, some of the offensive responsibility that that would have been on on Miles Bridges, so he becomes one Terry two. I'll say not PJ. I want to say PJ yeah. Washington, but I, I think he's still going to have to carry a lot of defensive load. Well, I I wonder because of his stretch big archetype. That that seems an easy enough way for him to be positive in the offense of LeBron, and he's actually not that far in the negative if you look at his his no, own LeBron. No, he was pretty close. Yeah, so he I think that's very capable for him to be able to get in the positive and actually be in that stretch big, knock down your threes. The two point percentage stays pretty good, or maybe even goes up a little bit. Yeah, PJ could be a, a positive um, play there. So I'm going to say Lamelo, Terry, Kelly. Those are the easy ones. I'll put those one, two, three. I'll put Gordon Hayward at fourth, and I'll put, you know, what's interesting is Isaiah Thomas, if they re-sign him, that backup point guard, if it's Isaiah or if it's Kemba, if it's Alfred, it's going to be way down on the offensive list. But if it's either of those two gents, you know, depending on the minutes, it's 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 going to be tough uh, because, you know, they're not going to share the, they could share the floor a lot, actually, I think, with LaMelo. That could be interesting. 
uh, you know, playing Lamelo a little bit more at the two, uh, you know, I, I think could allow an Isaiah Thomas or a Kemba to step up into there. But I'll play it safe and say Lamelo, Terry, Kelly, Gordon, and then PJ. That's I mean, I look five. at some of the yeah, I look at some of these. Some of these players are so young for the Hornets, Doug. I don't know. It's just Lamelo. You know, just turning 21. <clears throat> PJ Washington still only being 23 years old. He might be 24 because this is a little bit behind. But you, you still have a couple of these young guys, man. It, it's it's all about hopefully they can take a big step. All right, let's quickly look at the defensive LeBron stats. Sort that by the best players for the Hornets last season. We'll take Nick Richards out of this because he didn't really have a ton of minutes and say that it was Mason Plumley at one, P.J. Washington at two, Gordon Hayward at three, Jalen McDaniels at four, and Cody Martin at five for the defensive LeBron stats. Uh, yeah, do, I mean, you, do you like that top five again next season? Um, no. I mean, I but I guess according to the way that these stats are measured, then a Mason and a Nick Richards are going to be towards the top. I didn't see Mason as a real positive player defensively. Certainly didn't really, I didn't see Nick Richards as a real positive player defensively. We know that there is generally, there is no good defensive stat that very much so accurately represents what we're watching. And it's really hard to quantify what doesn't happen, right? Because you're trying to figure out, okay, yeah. it. so who is the best defensive player and we're trying to, okay, there wasn't a basket scored here. How do we measure that nearest defender? You know, it's, there's, right. yeah, it's just really hard. And so with these measures and formulas that people a lot smarter than me come up with, I, it still isn't extremely accurate. And therefore that's like, I, it, you have to rely on the eye test so much. And I mm -hmm. just don't see it for Mason and Nick, for instance, you know, I agree. how yeah, and you know how much I love PJ, right? Like, I, I just think given everything they've asked of him defensively, the way that he's able to be good enough perimeter defender guarding these point guards, at least provide a low anchor that's tough to move for these big guys down low and everything in between he's able to handle. A PJ is the one I think should be up here the most based off of my eye test formula, whatever that may look like. <laughs> yeah, for short stretches, I, I, I can't remember a player that PJ couldn't put the clamps on. Now, over the course yeah. of an entire game, yeah, it's it's going to be trouble. But I saw him stop Giannis Antetokounmpo. I saw him stop Jimmy Butler from knocking down a shot that would have won the game for the Miami Heat. Remember the opening night against Sabonis? Huge yeah. a defensive play in the post, forcing him out. Sabonis couldn't get close to the basket and made him take a tough hook, if I'm not mistaken. No, yeah, totally. So I think... You know, if if Mason gets a majority of the minutes this year, he's probably going to be up here on this stat just by virtue of how this stat measures things. I think, you know, mm -hmm. Mason could be there. But I think, um, you know, Mark Williams is another big candidate that could jump even ahead of a Jalen McDaniels or a Gordon Hayward. I'm, um, yeah. But you might like Jalen to jump if if he does get more minutes and more responsibility this season. JT Thor, another name uh, that if, you know, opportunity presents itself via injury, could compete for this stat. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I just think Jalen, the problem with Jalen McDaniel's defense sometimes is, is he's not real strong. I, I think when he was injured and he tried to return, I think you absolutely saw a fall off there. Remember how it kind of like just kept nagging him. It took him a little bit longer to return than we thought. He finally goes out there. I thought he was pretty sluggish offensively, wasn't clicking for him. And I even think defensively he was giving up a, a lot of ground. Yeah. I think people were starting to beat him off the dribble and it just didn't seem quite right to me. I think he figured that out as the season went on. I even think Borrego gave him some credit for, for it st uh, starting to click. That's just yeah. what happens with these players. So yeah, I have high hopes for Jalen, especially defensively. I don't think that LaMelo is going to uh, jump into the top five, although I think that would dramatically change the fortunes of the Charlotte yeah, Hornets if LaMelo suddenly uh, uh, got into the positive D LeBron stat here and, and was a force on the defensive end all of a sudden. Um, but but I think he has to get above where he was rated last season. He was negative 0.4, which was below uh, Miles. It was below Montrez. It was below Terry. Um, not the worst. He was kind of in the middle of a bad, but be, being in the middle of a bad defensive team means generally um, you're you're not a great defensive player, and and that's despite all of the steals, the turnovers that he created, mm -hmm. the transition opportunities that he created for the team. Those were all positives, but you have to weight that against 
the the risks that he took that turned into baskets for the other team and the amount of opportunities that a guard got because they were able to easily get by LaMelo Ball. But he does rate above uh, JT Thor, probably a limited minute situation there, but did rate above Ish Smith, Isaiah Thomas, and Kelly Oubre Jr., who was just <laughs> I mean, an absolute yeah. certifiable disaster on yeah. the defensive end. Negative 1.39. Only Very nicely done. Only, yeah, disaster. Only uh, only above James Booknight, who was a negative 1.99 on the defensive end. And yeah, I mean, even a small sample size anyway, that's going to skew that. Even if he was bad, it's still going to be skewed. Well, he was bad, but to... he was so, I think he was so bad, it, it, it limited um, his ability to play. Yeah, I'll say this too, just real quickly to, to spin the to spin the Miles Bridges loss into maybe one positive on the floor because it clearly is going to be a huge loss for the Hornets this year. Um, but we have criticized Miles a lot defensively, right? He has that capability, and it's it's not like he is completely void of good defensive stretches, but how many times have we seen him just completely fall asleep on that end, get beat back door in crucial times, no less? Could you have more attention or a more attentive defender with JT Thor, who's yep. starting to put it together? Or if McDaniels gets some of those minutes, is McDaniels going to be ready for that back cut? I'm not saying they're better than Miles Bridges. I'm looking at individual areas to where maybe you don't lose, right? Where, where can you make up that ground, that 20 points per game that you're going to lose? And maybe it's saving four six points a game defensively by just not getting beat back door and not falling asleep team defensively wise well here's one of the more interesting things that i'll be watching uh this season remember when steve clifford coached this team the first time and when he coached this team the first time this team had a lot of skill players but did not have a lot of players that fit the sort of physical tools makeup of a team that could defend multiple positions. And so Clifford was trying to install a defense that could turn some of these skill players into a team unit that could defend. Well, well now, uh, and, and all of those teams were really committed. They, they paid attention, they were committed, and, and he turned that team into a decent defensive team. Now he has the opposite problem, right? This team is full of players with great physical tools. JT Thor, LaMelo Ball, uh, P, uh, you know, PJ Washington somewhat, Jalen McDaniels, you oh, know, yeah. all of these guys, even Terry Rozier. I mean, I, I think ha when he commits to the defensive end, has the physical tools necessary to defend other players on the floor. But, the, but attentiveness, but commitment, those are the issues. And so that's why I, I think... Clifford has a shot of actually making this team, maybe not next season, but over the course of a couple of seasons, if you can maintain some continuity, could turn this team into one of the better defensive teams in the NBA. Yeah, and people get mad at us when we talk about LaMelo's defense, but it, it's not necessarily that he just gets beat all the time off the dribble. Like, I'm, I'm not saying he get, just gets blown by. I, I am I honestly really excited to see what Steve Clifford can do with the overall team defensive mindset for him. You know, the, it's it's the just completely abandoning the position and going after the basketball be, and, and the anticipation being used in the right spots. That's that's what I'm really excited about, to be honest, because I do think that can be used as a very big positive. And if he gets close to average or even average next season, like team defensive wise, I think there can be a lot of growth there, especially with Steve Clifford at the helm. All right. Coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast, sleep on the Hornets just yet. we have the Wheel of Random Hornets content coming up next. I don't know what we're going to discuss, but there is a new topic added. I know Doug is wishing and hoping and praying that that actually does show up. Find out if it does. Coming up next, Lockdown Hornets is locked on hornets they're running their rookies to greensboro they're driving them to greensboro and then driving them back the same day to play in an nba game i cannot <laughs> wait until the hornets load manage it's time for more of the locked on hornets podcast All right, go right to the wheel and spin it. I'm glad that we don't have Mitch and Steve staring right at us again. This is a lot better, and we'll just talk about the topic it lands on. Well, yeah, let me just really quickly tell you that I've taken away the topic that we discussed last time. In case you missed it, the NBA draft, that's gone. Added to the wheel, Spectrum updates. Got some updates on the Spectrum mm. Center next season. And well, I'm really, I'm really just fingers crossed, hoping, praying that we land on this topic. MJ 
or chicken soup? I have no clue what this is, too. We're going to find <laughs> out together. I don't know what Doug has cooked up. I know it's chicken soup. I don't know what's in it, though. So let's spin the wheel and maybe find out. Spin it! All right. Oh. <laughs> this is like I mean, the I most hate to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, whoa. The text coming right at you. 3D. Uh, uh, I don't want to be disappointed by the wheel, but I really just wanted MJ <laughs> or chicken soup. But instead, we well, have, in case you missed it, Summer League. It's probably the worst one, too. I'll say that. But yeah, you're right. The Practice spin. Oh, okay. All right. Look, sorry, Will. <laughs> there are no rules. There are no oh, rules. Oh, oh, that was so, so close. close. We just, it's tough. It was tough. so close. We'll have to wait. We got plenty. You know, I would cheat and just do it, but we've got plenty of spins. I want it to happen naturally. Okay. I can't cheat. So instead, we're going to talk about lineups. And we're I only going to cheat one time. What's the one? So we've done Bucket Brigade. You did Bucket Brigade on Monday. Yeah, uh, we did. Um, we did Bucket Brigade already. We did closing uh, lineups, ABC maybe closing line. We did the closing lineup. We've done starters. We've done reserves. Uh, what's next on the list? Do we not have I any should have lineups? Known, I should have known talk. this. Oh, oh, I know. Capital C clutch. Clutch with a capital okay. C. And this is not always lineup. be closing. There's a difference here. Uh, no, this is definitely a, a different uh, kind of situation. This is when th you need a bucket. You need one bucket, clutch possession, uh, sideline out of bounds kind of situation. Okay. Definitely different from the always, the always be closing lineup is the one where you're up you know, five to seven points and you need to close it out, get the W. Who are you going with in that last, you know, seven to eight minute stretch to mm -hmm. win your game? Um, this is totally different. Come on, man. I'm sorry. I about? didn't know. I, I don't know. All right. So we go. So you already have it listed here or are we trying to make it right now? That's what we're doing. No, we're trying okay. to make it right. Do you understand the rules? No, I all? don't. I don't understand your rules. I have no clue. I don't know if anybody no, we does. need to go to the players and, and select them and bring them down and form this capital C clutch lineup. Okay. I imagine you would love to have Terry as the first entry. I know you have, li you've he's uh, certified. Him as, I don't know if you know this, but he's a certified gamer. gamer. Right. Yeah. That's right. Thank I you. mean, I was he was the later. player that they looked to most for clutch possessions. I wish they, he would have yeah. come up a little bit more clutch in the overall game of that play in game. <laughs> yeah, he did not. That's true. Um, um yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting too. Like because Borrego would always go to Terry for those shots. And he was a good designer of those plays, but at the same time it was always Terry. So maybe get other guys involved and Lamello involved. Lamello has to be here too, no question. Okay. Yep. Lamelo for sure hit the shot against uh, Milwaukee. Hit a couple shots against Milwaukee, but the the runner in the lane or runner a leaner is a runner or leaner. It was kind of a Ooh. reener maybe. It was a little bit of runner, a little bit. Yeah, of it was a weird shot. It was weird going to his left. I think that's probably what it was. All right. So we got the starters in. They've made every lineup by the way. They're in the closing lineup. They're in the bucket brigade. Now they're in the capital C clutch lineup. Uh, who's next? We got Lamelo Ball. We got Terry Rozier. <sighs> yeah. If, if you are desperate for a shot, a tough shot. Right. You know, they... Yeah, your you're, you're option one and 1A is LaMelo Ball and Terry Rozier. So who's who's the guy that is going to uh, take the basketball and knock down a shot if those fail? I've got an answer. All right, let's hear yours. because I'm Mine's P.J. Point. Washington. I, I think you might have uh, thought well, I was yeah. going to go Kelly Oubre, but I think P.J. Washington is so confident when he gets the ball in his hands... And and he putting up his shot like nobody, uh, even more than Terry Rozier and I think Lamelo Ball. Nobody looks cooler when they shoot the basket. Cooler in the sense of calm, collected, not like mm -hmm. you know, not like putting on like black shades or I something. Gotcha. But like calm and collected <laughs> than PJ Washington. So if if everything breaks down, I want PJ Washington taking the next shot. Um, but I do think you put him in the wrong spot. Well, big, I guess, but I do think probably center. So yeah, if you're not going to label him, fine. But if you want to go four and five. I do think he's probably going to be the biggest player. Well, or I'm going to argue position. with you on that. I'm going okay. to argue right. with Who's you your on next that. one? Who's your next one? Well, because I want, uh, and I think this is a long-term play, but I actually want Mark Williams in my capital C clutch lineup. Okay, yeah. that's surprising. All right. Well, because I want, I want tip in. I want tip in opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. I want somebody down low that's going to have the opportunity to get in there. So I, I need some size. Uh, I, I need some length. Uh, he does for, go after for, it. 
Yeah, for the rebound. So P, you you put PJ and Mark, and I know you're you're losing that five out ability at that point, but I'm going to sacrifice that for the tip in opportunity. Yeah, and and you would think the opponent's not necessarily matching up that at that point if because they want to grab the rebound too. So if you you can at least hold on for one possession, that that might be close. I don't know, Mark Williams. I probably would still go PJ at the five, and then. It, it comes down to really who's the best shooter, right? Who are your best offensive players in, in that in that moment? I I'd go Gordon. I would. I, oh, I wow. have a feeling you'd Over go Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, Gordon's a better shooter, and it's just by every measure. Well, if you especially if capital C clutch, if you are down by one, you know, I mean, it gives you it does give you sort of a mid range opportunity. He's a great mid range shooter. Um, that, that Kelly's not going to necessarily give you it's Kelly is three or go home. So, uh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll go with you. Uh, this is a team yeah, sport. I'll go with yeah, you. Yeah. So, so what, yeah, I, I know we got to get out. Uh, Kelly Oubre would be the guy if, if you wanted to attack and Kelly would do it, then okay. I mean, Kelly, Kelly's good at finishing at the rim. It's why he's so maddening to be honest with you, because all he wants to do is shoot threes. Um, but, but Gordon, He's just a better shooter and it'll take him. And so if you can get some kind of open shot for him, he doesn't have to create. And even if he does, he still makes tough shots in the mid range. I mean, we saw him do that when he was healthy and when he was somewhat aggressive. Yeah. I, I still think you got to go Gordon. Um, all, all right, right. So there you go. LaMelo capital ball, C. Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, PJ Washington, Mark Williams. That's your capital C clutch lineup. We actually do have some more lineups to get to. So that's going to stay on the wheel of random Hornets contents. Uh, we one-stop shoppers. That's the next lineup that we're going to do. Walker, do you know what a one-stop shopper lineup is? No, I don't, but that's when find you out need, you need one stop, baby. Just one stop. It's the lineup Once. that you're going to, okay. You're going to throw in there when you're up one and you need one style. You call timeout, you get you get your best defenders in there. So, and not a ton to choose from. You're not <laughs> this is not a this is not a shot. This is more like a convenience store shopping, not a, a grocery store shopping situation. Uh but the one-stop shoppers, that's what we'll do next. I, I was too focused on the shopping part of that and we'll see if we talk about it. The wheel has to speak for that though. Or else we'll spin it again and then maybe force it to. All right, thanks for making Lockdown Hornets your first listen every day. For your second listen, get up to date on the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Lockdown NBA. Lockdown NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. Don't know if we're going to release the show tomorrow. Might be Doug's call. Could bring David Walker back into the fold, so you just have to uh, pay attention, see exactly what's going to take place. But if not, if that's not the case, we take the day off. Make sure you have a great weekend. 